It's raining really hard. I think the pool is going to run over. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. It stopped raining and the pool did not run over. It's run over in the past, but uh, not so far this year. I wanted to take you around the corner here, show you that somebody stole something from me last night. We're going around here to the scene of the crime. Right there, a skunk stole my avocado. This is one of my avocado trees, and it has huge avocados up there. And they fall down, and I pick them up and take them in the house. But last night, the skunk got to it first. And how do I know it was a skunk? I can smell it. I know where the skunk lives. I'll show you. The reason I know he lives here is because the gardener was watering the yard here one day with a hose and he was putting water into this hole. That hole right there. And the skunk came out. <laughs> well, Flowers are bright and pretty when it's wet after a rain. That squash is about ready to get picked. Cucumbers are coming to an end. A couple of butternut squash there. The chili peppers are ready. That one's beautiful. The leaf cutter ants totally took all the leaves off of this geranium. But in 10 days, all the leaves are back bigger and better. Nice little flower over there in the corner. Got some cacti in here also. This, I planted a whole bunch of flowers in here. And I think the gardener decided to weed it and tore them out as they were coming up. I'm not sure about that, but I don't think any of this is what I planted. It does look like we're going to get a little purple flower there. The barrel cactus is loving the fact that I'm watering it every day. I messed up here a little bit. All of those white spots are spray paint from me making that kitchen pantry. These cucumbers over here look like they're on their last leg also. I pulled the carrots. We're gonna make a carrot cake. Uh, I wanted to show you this. This is the spaghetti squash. And there's another one in there. You know, we can have about uh, three plantings a year here uh, on the north shore of Lake Chapala. And uh, it's about time to start thinking about the next planting. Copa de Oro, cup of gold. I know, they're not gold. I didn't name them. Oh, you see why I always have to get the same sandals? They have to match the tan lines. <laughs> Love a morning after a rain. These are castor bean plants. 
and they're poisonous to animals that try to eat them. That little shed out there was a sheep shed. Let me tell you the story about why we no longer have any sheep here. So this story is about a mountain lion. And the reason I'm thinking about a mountain lion today, besides looking out here where it happened, is that talking to my son yesterday, uh, he's up in Arizona. Uh, his neighbor saw a mountain lion breaking into a chicken coop and ate the chickens. We had a mountain lion here uh, at Lake Chapala. There were 11 sheep down here uh, in the federal zone. And the mountain lion came and killed six of them. And how do we know it was a mountain lion? Well, at the time, there was a five-foot chain-link fence um, out there by the water. And in the mud, you could see the lion's tracks of his back feet where he made an impression as he jumped over the five-foot chain-link fence. Also, we've had uh, wild dogs or street dogs get into the sheep pen before, and dogs will bite the legs. Uh, the sheep will run, the dogs will grab them by the back leg. And we've had um, a, a goat next door killed by dogs. But dogs don't do a neck bite in the behind the head. That's what big cats do. Uh, killed killed uh, six of the 11, eviscerated them. Uh, you don't want me to describe any more of that. Um, consumed eight, um, about half of one of them. Uh, two months later, it happened again. Killed all uh, of the remaining ones except for one and it had like a really messed up uh, leg. Anyway, again, um, bit behind the head on the neck and killed and eviscerated with big claws. Uh, that's what uh, that's what happened. It was about mm, maybe eight years ago. Mountain lion killed the sheep here. But what really reminded me of it when I said that these castor plants are poison, that last sheep who used to limp around here, and he lived underneath here. You can go underneath here from, from, from right there at my toe, that way, that's all you can go underneath uh, out there. And the sheep lived underneath there. Um, he ate these castor beans and died of the poison. I said he, it was she. So he used to have a sheep living down underneath there. Died from eating the poison castor beans. Gonna be a beautiful day here at Lake Chipala. As soon as the tropical sun burns off the morning clouds. The sun did come out and we're having a beautiful day. Lynn's showing me some of the zinnias she planted and she's very proud of them as well she should be. Aren't they pretty? My last several videos have just been hanging around home here. I thought maybe you're getting cabin fever just like me. So I'm going to take you along with my dash cam today to do some errands around town. That was fun. This is a pretty popular intersection for street entertainers. We get drummers and jugglers and panhandlers. It's uh, Walmart right there on the right and AutoZone. The Libramento on the left and um, Central Magno where the theaters and food court. A great store for uh, interesting breads. And up here on the right, we're going to stop at Super Lake. Super Lake is a store that has a lot of imported products. 
if you really have to have something that you had back home wherever you came from, they've probably got it, but it might be a little more expensive because of the import duties. Here's a car wash guy. You can get your car washed for 30 or 40 pesos just about anywhere you stop and park. Leaving Super Lake. Uh, this guy here, the car wash guy, he's going to help me back out. He's going to watch traffic or stop traffic. Oh and God. It's customary to give him a few coins of pesos because they help you. Uh, it was a fruitless trip here to Super Lake. I was stopping to see if they had some shout. Lynn is addicted to shout. Um, I don't know if it's brand loyalty or what it is, but here's the deal. It's always fun to talk about how things are less expensive in Mexico than in the United States, but it's not always the case. For instance, one of the meds that Lens takes costs over five times as much here in Mexico as it would in the United States. Now, all the rest of our meds are considerably less expensive, so it's really a net gain, much cheaper for meds in Mexico. And that med just can't be replaced. Um, Vanish is a Mexican product that's kind of like Shout, and I can't get Lynn to use it. Spray bottle of Vanish, it's $4.41 US dollars. Here's the price of Shout in the United States, $4.47. Now that's for 32 ounces. Here's the price of Shout in Mexico, 299 pesos for 10 ounces less, a third less stuff, 22 ounces, 299 pesos, about 15 US dollars five times as much. I can't get her to use Vanish. I don't know if it's brand loyalty or what. She claims it makes a rash on her hands and when I talk to her about why are you spraying your hands, I don't get anywhere. I think the lesson here is that you need to learn to live where you're at. You know, when in Rome, you do as the Romans do. But uh, I've gotten nowhere in 20 years with this shout deal. I'm going around the corner here to an ATM to get some cash. When we first came to Mexico, everything was cash. Nobody would take a credit card. Now, uh, they take credit cards at most places. Uh, if I go to the grocery store, I go to the hardware store, I use a credit card and I use one that gives me a little cash back. And I don't know how much money that amounts to, but it makes me feel good. I still need cash, however. I pay my maids and my gardener with cash. I pay my water bill with cash. I pay my electric bill and my telephone bill with cash. When a gas truck comes to my house, I pay in cash. Um, so we still need cash. Some of those things you can pay by credit card. I mean, I pay for my electric bill at the 7-Eleven or the OXO, and uh, you can use a credit card there. But I use cash. Anyway, as I'm sitting here thinking about going to the ATM and getting cash, it occurs to me, it occurred to me that it's time to make another video about exchange rates, ATM cards, international transaction fees, how exchange rates really work. There are so many people that live here that don't pay attention to this. And I know this because every day I see people standing in line to give away their money when they don't have to. Giving away their money when it's easier not to. Uh, so anyway, uh, I was going to talk about that here, but I'll make it my next video. It's time. So if you are planning on living in a country, whether it's Mexico or some other country, that's not the company, country where your income comes in, and you have to 
go through an exchange, currency exchange process for your living expenses, you need to pay attention to this. <laughs> I, I, there's a difference between a buy rate and, ex, and a sell rate on every window where you can exchange money or every bank where you keep your money in a foreign country and then you go and get some of it and they exchange it before it goes into your account. There's a buy rate and a sell rate. And you need to understand this because that's how the bank makes money and the money they're making is your money. I'm going to tell you how this works and it's an expensive thing not to understand it um, clearly. So come on back next week. Subscribe and come on back next week. And if you, if you don't think that this is something that you ought to pay attention to, don't subscribe and don't come back next week. Well, okay, go ahead. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Subscribe and come back next week. <laughs> I'll see you then. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.